So, hey, Andrew, are you there? Hey, Rob. Andrew, how are you doing today? I am excited for this presentation and to share some insights of what our organization has been up to with Facebook ads and how they can support everyone attending. Yeah, so folks here, uh, just to let you know, Andrew is a founder and CEO of a company called No Typical Moments. So they're true experts in the field of paid advertising. So while Don talked about how you can just leverage social media in general and a lot of different tactics, Andrew's actually gonna talk about more on the paid media side. So a lot of times on Facebook, and you can buy ads. On uh, Instagram, you can buy ads. Kind of just really demystifying what that process is like as well as some uh, different best practices related to conversion on that. Uh, Andrew's also, I read on your LinkedIn, I checked you out a little earlier, said that you were a best-selling author. Can you tell us a little bit about that before you get started? Sure. So I wrote a book. It has absolutely nothing to do with digital marketing. Uh, maybe four years ago, it's called The Two-Week Notice. And it was, I wrote it with two other authors, and it was a story and a recollection and really a how-to guide of how uh, we quit our jobs that we felt unfulfilled with and started our own organization. So it's definitely not the spontaneous millennial decision to quit your job and have van life on the California coast. It's a very practical guide of the steps we put in place to leave the job and set ourselves up for success uh, when we left. And for me, it was about a year and a half process. Wow. Yeah, I had a similar thing where before starting Cosvox 10 years ago, I had to like line different things up. And I kind of wish I had your book to read because it was kind of just like, let me just wing it. <laughs> That's what I thought. But kind of uh, without further ado, Andrew, I'd love for you to take over the screen share and we'd love to hear about your digital marketing journey right now, as well as how you're helping nonprofits and social good organizations with clicks to conversions. Andrew. Perfect, so my presentation is loaded up okay? Yeah, it looks great. We can see your webcam, your audio is crystal clear, and your screen is now shared. Perfect, so today we're gonna to be talking about something that I find uh, the most joy out of in my life outside of maybe watching the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that is how purpose-driven brands can leverage the power of digital media to acquire new donors. If you have earned revenue, how to acquire more customers. And I may use those uh, terms interchangeably depending on uh, your nonprofit model and what may be more ideal for your nonprofit. And I actually have some case studies I'm going to walk you through of how some brands like Charity Water have used Facebook ads to acquire donors to their organization. So I'm gonna be breaking this out into a four phase discussion today. So the first phase is all about traffic. And when I say traffic, I'm referring to Facebook ads and what you're actually doing within that platform. So I want you to put yourself in the shoe of your potential uh, donor and think about all of the social settings someone is in when they're actually on Facebook. So it could be anything from someone is bored at a party and trying to space out. It could be someone is in line at Starbucks. It could be someone is in the bathroom. We're really on our cell phone in all these weird situations. And you're not necessarily on Facebook with the intent for a call to action to donate or to buy. Um, you're on Facebook because you're trying to uh, check out, you know, cute photos of dogs, travel photos. Uh, maybe you're checking out your old high school friends, seeing what they're up to. And Facebook is all about how you can create some type of disruption to enroll someone to click on your ad from Facebook and leave Facebook. It's a lot different than if you put yourself in the shoe of when you're on Google or YouTube, for instance. Uh, when you're, oops, just messed up that. So. Uh, when you're on Google or YouTube, uh, you're on those platforms because you have a specific intention uh, in that moment. You're on Google because you're trying to find a pizza shop because you're hungry. You're on YouTube because you're searching for a how-to video. The environment in Facebook is a lot different. And really from an ad perspective, you're trying to get them off of Facebook as quick as possible onto your website. That's going to be the main bulk of our discussion today. And Phase two is then going to be talking more about what Charity Water 
uh, does when someone leaves Facebook to acquire that donor. And I'll break down what a microsite and landing page looks like um, for that donation to happen and what Charity Water does and some basic foundation elements that uh, we believe are key in that process. Uh, phase three is then I'm going to talk about what actually happens when someone decides to donate to your organization. Because now that you've acquired their email address, uh, you want to make sure that this is not a one-time donation. And what are you doing to really continue to tell that story of your brand and enroll them month over month to donate? Maybe it's uh, end of the year charitable donations, whatever it looks like. It's up to you then in phase three to increase the lifetime uh, donor value. And phase four is going to be about the key metrics to pay attention to within uh, Facebook. Um, the thing with, you know, Instagram and everyone's really concerned with how many followers you have or your likes, your comments, and those are great engagement metrics to show that people are paying attention to your brand. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about Facebook ads, you're really concerned with a few key metrics that are going to be able to tell you whether this is a worthwhile investment in your organization. So as an agency, there's usually a handful of questions that we get that I wanted to run through because these are some common uh, objection conversations we have when someone's debating on investing in Facebook ads. And the first is, can this really work for my business? So the thing with Facebook ads uh, is that, you know, they can work. And there's also situations where they're not beneficial for organizations. And I'll walk you through actually um, two client examples of a client we decided to take on and then one actually we decided to turn away. And these are for-profit companies, but uh, I think you'll see some interchangeable terminology and what I'm discussing and how it may or may not apply to your organization. Um, there was one organization, it's my friend Sam, and she runs a certification training program. Um, when she came to me to run Facebook ads, I kind of peeled behind the curtain to see what exactly was going on with her business. And I saw that she uh, has been running this training program for over four years. She knows exactly who her target market is. She has a marketing budget. She has um, a full execution plan of how she actually delivers her product. And everything was lined up. And I told her, uh, Sam, I think this is a worthwhile investment to see how many customers we can acquire uh, and reach your goals of what you want for your new certification or love. And uh, we ended up having uh, her most successful launch ever. She, her previous sales record was, uh, she brought in 50 sales and we brought in 72. Uh, and this was at a uh, very high price point, $12,000. So it really, really added some top line revenue to her organization. Uh, I also wanna share an example of a company that we turned down um, about two weeks ago. And I did the same thing. She came to me and I took a look at her organization, even though it had been around for 25 years, uh, she had no idea who her target market was. She does a lot of things spontaneously. She had no marketing budget. And I, I told her in order for Facebook ads to work, there's some foundational elements you should be having in place for this to really feel like you're putting gasoline on a fire. Um, if not, it's going to feel like you're playing Russian roulette with your marketing spend and you're really just going to be throwing some money out there and it's not going to be proactively uh, constructed to really create success for the organization. Uh, something else that we tend to hear is I've tried this in the past, but it didn't work. So what I'm hoping will happen today is that you'll view Facebook ads with a uh, new lens, a new perspective. and really get to the root of what may have happened in the past. Uh, maybe you were boosting posts and consider this to be running ads. Maybe you uh, paid an uh, unpaid college intern to do this and they had no experience running this in the past. Maybe your nonprofit just doesn't have a differentiated factor in the marketplace and it really wasn't drawing people in. Uh, maybe you had creatives that weren't compelling. There's a lot of things that could have been going wrong and I'm wanting you to really pinpoint by the end of the discussion of what held up success in the past. I have a small budget, can this work for me? So the great thing about Facebook ads is you can spend as little or as much as you want on a monthly basis. So if you only have $100, $500 to spend, that's great. 
Uh, you only spend that amount. Um, you don't need to spend any more. Um, I'm sure though, if we, and I don't have data on Charity Water, and yes, I know they're a very large nonprofit organization, um, but I'm sure they're spending tens of thousands of dollars uh, per month on Facebook ads. And the only reason that they're continuing to spend more is that they know this is actually bringing in new donors to their nonprofit and it's helping to grow uh, their organization. Um, and I know marketing sometimes, uh, you know, it's more of a for-profit terminology, um, but clearly Charity Water has found some success as to how this is helping to engage their donor base and bring more donors into their organization. Uh, and the last is Facebook ads don't work. So this is a common thing that we hear. And about uh, a year and a half ago, I was debating as well as to whether Facebook ads were on their way out. Uh, the reason was there was so much stuff happening with Trump, data security, Zuckerberg testifying in front of Congress. And as a result of all those things happening, people were really leaving Facebook in waves and shifting to Instagram Snapchat, other social media outlets. In order for Facebook ads to work, it's based upon how many daily users the platform has and what their engagement level is like. So if people are distrusting of Facebook, there's less people to advertise to, people aren't trusting their newsfeed. Uh, and what ended up happening though is our client's data suffered for about two months. So from April until June-ish, our client's data was going straight downhill. And in about June, we started to see an uptick. And what I can correlate this to is that some of the PR that happened with Facebook, they really weathered the storm. They gained back the trust and people were starting to come back to the platform to market and advertise to and uh, engage with on a daily basis. One of the things we always talk about our organization is there's no beginning and end with marketing, just ascension. So what I mean by that is we've run hundreds, if not thousands of campaigns over the past seven years. And there's never been an instance of one of our campaigns where we just set it up and we forget it. This is something we're in on a day-to-day -day basis. Because this is so data-driven, you can see data points at every phase of the donor journey, whether it's what's happening in Facebook, what's happening on your landing page, what's happening in your email sequences. And the data can always be improved and you're always gonna to have to be working to maintain it at your baseline once you achieve some degree of success. So this is something that gets to be worked on day in and day out, uh, week over week, and always in evolving and improving. I wanna dive into why Facebook ads are so powerful. So, some of these things may weird you out if you're not uh, already aware of how Facebook's algorithm works. And so every single action that you're doing within, within Facebook's platform, whether it's you going on there and liking posts, whether it's you commenting, whether it's you sharing where you work, where you live, pages you like, all that information is being sent directly to Facebook's uh, backend algorithm. And that's why you can get so honed in and narrowed in that I'm targeting a male who's 25 to 40, who lives in California, uh, who has an interest in uh, poverty, for instance. Um, you can get super honed in, and uh, from a psychographic standpoint, you can start to appeal a lot more to people outside of just some of their basic demographic information. Uh, from an advertising standpoint, this is really exciting because if you put yourself in the shoe of a consumer who's you know, me watching Steelers on a Sunday, I'm watching the Steelers and I'm inundated with um, Geico and Coors Light commercials while I'm watching the game. And I have no interest in that and I'm probably spacing out on the commercials and actually just going back to Facebook to try to entertain myself. Um, versus within Facebook, you're constantly being fed information based upon what you share you enjoy. Uh, and I'll give an example of how this happens with me. So. Uh, I am always talking about travel and entrepreneurship and festivals and so uh, in the outdoors. So I'm continuously seeing ads about these topics. Uh, on the flip side, I don't think one time in my entire Facebook history, I've mentioned babies one time. So I've never seen an ad for anything related to kids or baby products. And that's because what I'm telling Facebook I enjoy 
they're sending the information based upon that. Uh, the next thing is audiences. And I'm actually gonna talk about this in more detail in a few minutes. Um, and audiences are super powerful because you can take the data that your business owns, whether that's your Facebook fans, whether that's your email list, whether that's website traffic, and you can upload all of that information uh, into Facebook and run ads to those individuals, or you can upload that data to Facebook and Facebook will say, here's a million other people just like those individuals. Um, so let's think about how powerful this would be for your nonprofit if you have your donor list, you have all of their emails, you upload that donor list to Facebook and Facebook tells you, here's another million people exactly like the individuals who've already donated to your organization. Uh, this is gonna be super powerful because Facebook takes all of the customer avatar research um, out of the equation and they're just telling you, this is your audience, run ads to these individuals. The next bucket is pixels and retargeting. So what a pixel is, is, uh, and I don't want this to confuse you, it's, a, it's simply a line of code that you embed on your landing page. And what this means then is you can run ads to anyone who visits that page in the future. Uh, and I'll give you two examples of how, <clears throat> how you've probably seen this play out. Um, the first is uh, the classic example of an airline. So, you know, you're on Expedia.com and you're checking out flights to Hawaii. So you don't actually want to take a trip to Hawaii, but you're just checking out what the costs are going to be, if it's actually possible, and you're just flirting around with the idea. You, get, you go all the way through the checkout process up until the point in time where you input your credit card. What happens then, you click X, and within probably an hour, everywhere you go across the internet, you're seeing ads related to trips to Hawaii. And it's super annoying. You never actually wanted to go to Hawaii. And now everywhere you go, they're rubbing in your face that you can't go to Hawaii because you don't have enough money or the timing's not working out. So that's an example of where targeting, retargeting is really annoying. Um, and because Expedia.com pixels that website, they're gonna run ads to you all across the internet to try to convince you to take that trip. On the flip side, I wanna give an example of how this could be really powerful for your brand. And this is another uh, for-profit example, but it's something that I think will make the point of the power of this if it's used for good. So I'll give an example of my friend, Taylor Conroy. He has a really niche business that helps authors and speakers land their first ever TEDx talk. So if you're an author, you're an aspiring public speaker, this is a really enticing offer for you because it's so niche and it's a really complex process to figure out how do I land a TEDx talk? So let, I'll give an example of myself. I'm an aspiring public speaker. I'm sharing with Facebook you know, information and videos about TEDx. I'm posting about how I want to be speaking and Facebook's using all that information and deploying it right to Taylor. So Taylor is he has a great Facebook advertiser, which is not myself, I'm not tooting my own horn. Um, he decides to target me because I'm most likely to want to take him up on this offer. Um, and he runs an ad to me and I'll give you an example of, I'm at Starbucks. So I'm at Starbucks, it's 8 a.m. and I'm bored. I'm checked out of the process. I don't want to pay attention to anyone around me. So I go to Facebook uh, to distract myself. And I'm on my Facebook newsfeed. I'm on my infinite scroll. And all of a sudden, I see this guy with a sleep tattoo talking about how I can land my first TEDx talk and all of my dreams are, are going to come to fruition. Uh, I decide to click that ad and I get taken over to a landing page. And I'm about to download his free white paper as to how to land my first ever TEDx talk. And all of a sudden the barista goes, hey you, you're next up in line, let's order. Uh, I'm really ashamed, I'm embarrassed because I wasn't paying attention. And I click out of that page, I put my cell phone back in my pocket. And because we're so ADD in this generation, you know, next thing I know, five hours have passed and I forgot I was even on that landing page and I was about to land the talk of my dream. Uh, if Taylor doesn't have a pixel installed on his website, if I go back to Google 
and try to search for man with a sleeve tattoo, it's going to be really, really hard for me to find that page ever again. However, if Taylor has a pixel installed, probably within the next hour or two of me being back on Facebook, he can run that ad to me again. And then I can take him up on that offer, download the free white paper, and figure out how I can land my first ever TEDx talk, and all of my dreams are going to come to fruition. Uh, the other thing I want to share is how this gives you the ability to really own your market's traffic. Uh, so what I mean by this is when I was doing some research for this presentation, I went on to Charity Water's uh, page to donate. And every single time I'm on the internet now, I see ads for Charity Water. Um, and so what this is doing is once I view Charity Water as my expert in this space of how I can solve and aid the specific cause, they're really owning my attention. And for me, I have so much going on and it just makes my life so much easier that I can go to Charity Water to give back, feel fulfilled. I don't have to do due diligence again. I just know that I know my money is going to a great cause and I can trust them. And they're not even allowing me to really vet out some potential other nonprofits to donate to because they're always in my face and they're not doing it in a way where it's always to donate. I'm now seeing these really cool video ads related to them telling their story and their impact. So it's keeping me engaged in a much healthier dynamic than just donate now, donate now, donate now. Oops. Um, let me get back to that slide. I want to run through uh, three buckets of where we run ads. The first is warm audiences. So this is when we run ads specifically to people who are, only, who are already familiar with your brand. This is going to be your Facebook fans. This is going to be your website traffic. This is going to be your email list. Um, and when we're running ads to these individuals, they're people who are already familiar with your nonprofit and organization. Um, and just like from a for-profit standpoint where your best customer is someone who's already bought from you, uh, your best donor is someone who's already familiar with your brand and they trust you and they'll be more likely to want to give you that donation, especially with all the holiday season coming up in just a few months. Uh, the people most likely to donate to you again are going to be the people who already know and trust your nonprofit organization. Uh, the thing, though, with running ads to warm audiences is that you only have so many Facebook fans, you only have so much traffic going to your website, and your email list is only so big. Um, as a result, we then create a second bucket called look like audiences. So this is when we upload your Facebook fans, your website traffic, your email list to Facebook and say, we want to see a million other people exactly like these individuals who already have an express interest in your organization. Uh, and I'll give the example again of the email list of uh, past donors. Um, what you can do is you can upload and segment out that list of people who are already donated to your nonprofit, upload that to Facebook, and then Facebook will say, here's a million other people just like these individuals who have already donated to to you. Um, the great thing about this is that they're doing all the guesswork for you. You don't have to dive in your customer avatar research and guess who your audience may be. They're just giving you this information based upon all the data points they have on us. The third bucket is quote audiences. Um, so you want to explore all three of these buckets um, because this is a total data driven decision. Uh, there's been numerous times where we've entered this thinking or look like audiences were going to perform best. Um, but in actuality, when we actually started to run ads, our cold audiences actually perform best. So cold audiences are when you're really diving into your customer avatar research. And this is when you're saying, uh, my ideal donor is a 25 to 40 year old male who lives in Southern California, who makes above a certain level of income and likes certain pages. Uh, so say your nonprofit, and I keep on going back to Charity Water just because I love their digital strategy and campaign. Um, if your cause is similar to Charity Water, you could actually run ads to people who like Charity Water's page. Uh, and you can hone it in to men 25 to 40 who live in Southern California. 
Um, if you are a specific geo-targeted nonprofit where your impact is more localized in, let's say, uh, the Pittsburgh region, you could actually run ads just to people who live in a specific zip code in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, because someone who lives in, I live in San Diego now, and you know the average San Diego resident is not gonna donate to a random Pittsburgh nonprofit. Um, you really wanna draw emotionally into how this is impacting and contributing to the local community. And I'm gonna have much more of an affinity to a nonprofit within a 10 mile radius of where I live in San Diego right now. So when you bucket those three groups, you are gonna start a process called split testing. So you have all of your targeting set up, all of it aligned, and now you're gonna create some tests to see what variations of copy and graphic are actually performing uh, best. So you can see this example of Charity Water here. So they have the exact same video. You can see though the story they're telling at the top is very different. Um, the one on the left is much more about Scott's history and the founding of the organization. Um, the one on the right is much more about the user and what they would get out of donating. Um, and I'm sure if you looked at the back end of Charity Water, uh, they have tons of tests and I saw they're probably running over 50 ads right now in which they're just trying to figure out which combination of copy, graphics, video, or actually enrolling someone to click that ad and draw them into their donor page. And these are, this is another uh, nonprofit uh, that I wanted to give an example of, and this is uh, Doctors Without Borders. Um, so in both of these examples, you're actually gonna be, in this case, watching this video, going directly to the donate page. Uh, same with uh, Donors Without Borders. And in this case, they're telling very, very different stories of what they're split testing. So you can see nothing here is gonna be the same. They have a static graphic image here, they have different copy at the top. This one is utilizing a video. Um, they have different call to actions down here with some of the headlines they're utilizing. And this is really an experiment Doctors Without Borders is running right now. Um, and as much as we have hypotheses entering this of what we think is gonna perform best, we really just let the data determine what's actually allowing us to send ideal traffic to our donor page and what it is costing our nonprofit to acquire that donor. And usually when we're starting campaigns, we're running about 45 tests at once. So between all the copy, all the uh, targeting, all the variations of copy, graphics, video, um, we're just trying to figure out what is resonating best with our audience. And if you can utilize video and show real video about how your work is making impact on your actual user base, that's gonna be ideal. Um, so Doctors Without Borders, their video is going directly to the people that are impacting the most. And this is really gonna appeal to the heartstring. Um, and with this video with Scott, um, the angle they're taking here is much more about, you know, their CEO and his origin story and telling that story through that lens. I'm sure though, if we had this video to play, it would be showing actual video and footage of what it's like um, in some of the developing countries they're supporting. So the next phase of what I wanna turn into is once someone is enrolled in your nonprofit and vision, what are you doing on your donor page to actually enroll that person to pull out their credit card and make some form of contribution? So I wanna share an example of what this page looks like and then I'll go back. Uh, this is Charity Waters. Um, as you can see here, I love the clean design here. It's not over complicated. They have a cool video from Scott and then they have a donor option right here. So I love this one-two punch of having another video to play, talking about how amazing Charity Water is, all the people they've impacted, where your money's gonna be going to, and then it's very clean design right here of how you can donate. Uh, the interesting thing that Charity Water does here is they actually um, push their donors to make a monthly contribution. Um, so what this is doing then is creating some type of recurring revenue for their organization where they know they're gonna be getting 10, 20, $30 a month 
from their donors instead of just one-off uh, contributions. I think that's a really innovative model that Charity Water has undertaken here. Um, and so going back to some of these elements, um, you want this page to have a very clear and specific offering. So as you can tell with Charity Water, they're not confusing you with anything else. It's very clear, donate here, and how much do you want to donate? You want to reduce distractions. As you saw on Charity Water's page, um, it's very clear once again. You can watch the video and donate, and you can't navigate around. Those are your options. Um, the social proof for Charity Water would come into play with that video. So if you have the ability to talk about the impact your organization has made, um, give a video testimonial of someone who's been directly impacted by your work, amazing. Uh, excellent copy and graphics. So what I mean by that is you want to make sure that your branding is consistent across your nonprofit. So whatever tone of voice you use in your Facebook ads, whatever type of branding and graphics you use in your Facebook ad, you want to make sure that that's consistent on the next phase of the donor journey. Uh, subconsciously, if you have really great copy on Facebook, but your landing page is riddled with grammatical errors, it's going to create some disconnect and distrust with your audience. Uh, and you want to hit on the solution and pain. Uh, what I mean by this is you really want to be sharing, um, you know, where your money is going to be going, uh, the opportunities that are available to people when they donate, and the exact uh, impact that it's going to create to uh, the people where this money is going to. Uh, and mobile friendly. Um, like I discussed before of the environments that people are in when they're on Facebook, you want to make sure that this is fully optimized uh, for mobile because if not, you're going to be losing some individuals on that customer journey. And Rob, I want to check in real quick to make sure I'm okay on time. Um, how am I doing on time, Rob? I think our next session is at 11.40 in about five minutes. So we could probably maybe uh, jump to a few final points and then for Q&A. Sure. Sure. Um, so I'll be very quick on some of these other points. This is something I wanted to share of what happens after someone donates. This is the example of Doctors Without Borders. So right when you donate, you get this uh, video. And what I thought was really interesting here is they're asking you for a employer match. So you can select your employer here and then enter your employee's email. So you can send an email directly to someone you work with to try to enroll and persuade them to donate as well. Uh, pixels and retargeting, like I mentioned, I'm getting ads from Charity Water and Doctors Without Borders everywhere I go across the internet right now. Um, with your donor system, I want to get into real quick of some email communication that you can make. Uh, so Doctors Without Borders, Right when I donate, I get an email from them. I actually made this contribution yesterday. Uh, and then I get a branded email from them thanking me for my contribution. So what I want to uh, share here is whatever nonprofit you view as someone in your space or someone you look up to, you really can just reverse engineer what they're doing. Because if you donate even just a dollar, you'll be on their email list. You can see the exact type of communication that they're making and how they're really indoctrinating their donors into the brand and continuing that communication past that first donation. Um, what, the last point I wanna make is around data. So this was more of a for-profit example, um, but I wanted to show you the complexity of what you should be evaluating. So you can really determine whether this is a good investment into your nonprofit. Um, this is really just a giant math equation that you're solving and projecting out if I spent this much in ads, how much you come back in donations, and what that lifetime donation value could look like. And if you're grounded in the actual uh, math and the data here, it's going to allow you to make decisions that are a lot more uh, proactive for your nonprofit in determining whether this is actually helping to build your donor base moving forward.
Uh, so let's, uh, before we wrap up then and the next speaker comes on, uh, Rob, do we want to open up some questions? Yeah, so I think we only have time for maybe just uh, one question or two. So uh, let's go with some of the questions. So uh, Jennifer is asking, what is the difference between warm and lookalike audiences on Facebook? So a warm audience is someone who's already a Facebook fan, someone who's on your email list and website traffic. What a lookalike audience is, is you can actually go into Facebook and upload your list and run ads similar to those individuals. And Facebook will say, here's a million other people who match the same demographic and psychographic data as those individuals on your email list. So like I've shared with the example of uh, donors, you can upload and segment out your past donor list, upload that to Facebook, and Facebook will say, here's another million individuals, just like people who've donated from you uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. Another question that we have is, uh, let's say you don't have a big ad budget like with Charity Water or Doctors Without Borders, uh, where their budgets are quite large on sure. the marketing team. Uh, what, can, what can a small, smaller nonprofit with a smaller budget be able to do? Sure. So there's a uh, nonprofit that I've given some uh, advisory services to in San Diego. They're called the Ecology Center. And with really, this goes back to the data. So what I was helping them on was uh, marketing a event. So this was their big earned revenue uh, event of the year. And so I was working with their social media coordinator just for $100 to see, you know, if we run $100 in ads, can we actually get some more signups? Because the ticket cost is going to be $175. And the average person who then comes to our big event ends up contributing another hundred on average. Um, so I was working with her to test super small and for only hundred dollars and we just targeted their email list. We uploaded that to Facebook. They had some really get great videos, some great copy, uh, and we ran ads uh, specifically to those individuals to see if we could bring in some more revenue uh, for this big event that they're having. So you can test for as small as you want and I would definitely start with some of those warm audiences that you've built up over the years. Mm, amazing. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for the time today. I think the, the, the insights particularly around how you can uh, optimize your donation page and donation form really interesting, uh, just because those are something that are very tactical that a lot of nonprofits on this summit can actually do, you know, having a seamless experience, making it mobile friendly. You know, I think those are, things that we always pre-share at Cosbox that we make sure that our product can really do. And it's amazing just to see how when it comes to not only the, the kind of the, the kind of the paid advertising side, having a great platform donation page, donation experience for donors is also equally as important. So your budget doesn't go to waste. So I really love that. And I have one uh, tool, Rob, I can share. Um, so with Facebook, you can actually use a tool if you go to google and just search for facebook ads library uh it will go to a page in which then you can type in any account you want so if you typed in charity water you can see every single ad they're running so if you're curious to see what other nonprofits in your space are doing you know the formula is already there and you can just really reverse engineer what other people are doing and see how it aligns with your nonprofit uh, that's amazing. What was uh, what are should people search for again to find out that tool? Uh, Facebook Ads Library. If you search in Google for that, and then it will take you to a page, and you can check out every ad any company's running. Awesome, great. Facebook Ads Library allows you if you search for it, you'll find the link. Uh, you can see what other nonprofits, other companies are doing in terms of ads, and that's a great way just to get some inspiration, especially as you're doing some of your creative. So that's a great tip. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for your time today. This is amazing. I really love this uh, uh, kind of perspective on paid media, paid advertising. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so in terms of next steps, uh, people can check you out, Andrew, at notypicalmoments.com. Is that right? Yep. Uh, notypicalmoments.com is our website. And my email is andrew at notypicalmoments.co. Uh, we don't have the common CO aligned for whatever reason that happened like six years ago and I just haven't fixed it. So it's uh, .co if you wanted to reach out and chat. 
Okay, cool. So Andrew, if you could do me a favor and just chat that in into the chat box uh, to all panelists and attendees so they could uh, capture information if they had any further questions or want to check you out. Great. So we're going to take a quick one minute break as we prep our next speaker. Jeremy Bivens is super excited about his presentation on digital storytelling. So we'll be right back in just one minute. And uh, this is a great opportunity for you as well to take a break uh, before our next session. So we'll be right back in just one moment. Okay, great. So we're back before one minute, but I just wanted to review some logis logistics items just because we have a lot of folks joining us um, at this point in time. You know, it's 11.43 a.m. Eastern and uh, working backwards, that is uh, 8 something, 8.43 a.m. Pacific. So a lot of uh, West Coast folks are joining us. I want to share kind of just a few logistics items with uh, us today, with you guys today. Uh, first one is that summer programming. Uh, we went over to kickoff. We talked about social media savvy um, as well as paid media just now. Our next session, uh, which is around digital storytelling. And then afterwards, we have a summer recap as well as some additional things on Google ad grants and donor retention. The full uh, schedule can be found on cosbox.com slash summit. So if you want to plan out, plan out your day, uh, feel free to go to that. I'll paste in the link in the chat again, cosbox.com slash summit. Um, we also have all the notes and recordings for you. So if you can't make it all day or if you miss some of the early sessions, feel free to uh, purchase our notes and recordings so you can share this with your colleagues, share and view this all weekend long. You can do that. Uh, the other thing too is I want to thank our some of our sponsors, Harbor Compliance, as well as Joe Goresh Fundraising for helping put on the summit. I want to thank all of our speakers as well that we have here today, including our next one, uh, Jeremy Bivens. And then very lastly, we are also offering a digital fundraising course. So going to take your fundraising from zero to 